So hi guys again, Lucas here and this is part 2 out of 4 where I'm going to go through how I created wavy screen effect, scene depth and volumetric lights and why I didn't use scene depth and uh, uh, why I didn't use volumetric lights. Um, so uh, I forgot to mention part 1, why, how I created this uh, camera, how I swapped them around the level. So if I open my level blueprint You can see this is just a simple blueprint where uh, when I press uh, one key one, and I set the target view with blend to the camera that I want, and so on and so on for all the other keys. And this is just a simple function uh, for when I have my game open in a full screen, I can press escape and it uh, executes a console command exit. So let's go to my post process volume and. Let's enable the wavy screen. As you can see, there is a uh, waves going through the screen. So I have I created this effect. Uh, let's open it. And let's set this aside. And I'm go going to zoom on it like this. So we can pause the video here and just copy the effect if you want. I uh, I will, as I mentioned before, I will post links to all the videos that I watch, so you can watch the tutorials also. Um, so let's go through what I did in this effect. So this is the post-process material. And uh, what I have done is basically there is uh, two same textures, as you can see is the normal textures that are zoomed really close panned and rotated and then subtracted from each other then there is a RG masked and what is this uh, this is just the UNV tiling on each of them so this is doing the zooming uh, this is the collection parameters so I use this in my post post process materials uh, you can just use it in a more materials if you want and you can easily adjust it and uh, see the difference on your screen so how I create a uh, collection parameter, material collection parameter is if I go right here, uh, right click, go into materials and textures and click on this material parameter collection. So if I go back to my uh, post process, uh, wavy screen, and you can get it just by typing parameter and then it's parameter collection. You click on this and you choose the collection that you want to use for this material. Um, so what I did was uh, zoom the two, two normal textures really close, see mask RNG, then multiply it with uh, uh, distance level and distance distort. So basically, so I have a more control over how strong do I want the wavy screen effect to look like. And I'm going to show you when I change the uh, parameters. And I can just start previewing this node so we have a better understanding of what is happening if I put this on the screen. So this is your screen and as you can see it's basically panning and rotating two normal textures, masking RNG uh, channels of them and going across the screen. And then it's uh, uh, taken a scene depth, divided by some value, clamp it between 0 and Y, uh, multiply by some distance distort which I can adjust and uh, also multiply this by some distance level which I can adjust take the screen position, mask the RG as well, add it all together and then uh, pass it through this uh, scene texture post-process input zero where it applies already the post-process uh, tint on your screen. So now if I go and uh, uh, close this and I open my baby screen post-process material, I'm going to put this aside, open all of the values here so we can just Pause the video here and copy these parameters if you want. So I have a strength R, strength G, distance level, U tile and a V tile in here. Sorry, I didn't open this one and a distance distort. So let's just change some of these parameters and see what is going to happen. So if I start distorting this distance distort, as you can see, I'm getting closer to my textures and this is getting me a stronger effect and if I go in back this is getting me a s smaller effect so you, ch you just play with these values and you can get as you can see you can get uh, any effects on this 
that you would like. So let's let's put it on something that is was 0 0.5 right here and a little bit less in here I think. Oh man. 0 0.02 I think it was there, yeah. Let's put this to some normal value, 0 0.5. So yeah, these values are really small because the texture is moving really slowly. You can see that that's how I created the wavy screen effect for underwater. And now I'm going to go and talk about uh, this post-process material which is a scene depth. So I'm going to turn it on. How you get it to blendables is if I'm going to delete this one for example uh, delete this, you have a zero array, you go, you choose, you add and then you go to your uh, wavy screen, you add it in that gives you the wavy screen and then you add another one, choose asset reference and I'm going to get the scene depth so as you can see this already looks quite good for underwater effect if you just use a scene depth so uh, why I didn't use this one is because as you can see I I look around I'm going it's moving it looks nice but as soon as I look up as you can see I look up the water is translucent and the scene depth is not working with translucent materials so that's why I had to not use it but for some other uh, underwater effects where you don't have a, 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 a water level on the top you can use this as well if you wish so I'm going to show you how I created this material so if I open this material right here and I'm going to again zoom on it so you can just pause the video here and copy everything this is a collection parameters but you don't need to use collection parameters you can also use a uh, vector uh, vector for and place it in there and then choose the color that you you like for a light and dark color of your scene depth I was using this collection parameters so let's just close this uh, oh so I, I, I have to explain how it's working so it's taking the scene depth dividing with si by some value so I have a have a control over it and then has a light and dark color and it's blending between dark and light color and then it's uh, multiplying it with the scene texture post process input again so if I close this and I open my scene depth material uh, values sorry my uh, uh, material parameter collection for my scene depth I'm going to again do the same thing so I'm just going to open everything here so you can copy the values and use them if you like this was dark blue, I was just playing with this let's put it back to dark blue here as you can see I can just start adjusting these values and you can see that the scene is changing color to whatever you set these values between uh, that you will be blending so and there is the how far you want it to be you can see you can just make it go really really far or really really close so you have a feeling like you're in really really dark water going to the black values so you can just make it a little bit visible water so we can just again play with these values and get the effect that you like but it's not working with the translucent materials and I'm going to show you uh, a little visualization of it so if I go to my buffer visualization and I go to overview and you can see I can see all of my buffers normal world normal mappers surface specular base color and so on and so on and here is the scene depth in the left bottom corner and as you can see I can see the scene depth and it's going between black and white so it's going between 0 and 1 and it's taking the depth of the scene but as soon as I look up you can see that scene depth it's going straight to black so this is updating if I'm moving but as look as soon as I look up it's black so that's why I couldn't use this scene depth material for the end end result that I I am using uh, a fog. So let's put this back to a lit scene, and now let's go over the god rays. So for this effect, I will have to turn on a little bit more of the effects. So let's turn this off. Don't want this one. Let's turn my exponential fog back. You can see the effect of fog right here. Let's turn on my caustic lights as well for this effect. And as you can see, I'm getting this 
this god rays coming through the water surface coming and shining on me and it's really really sharp and why is that so if I go to my post process fog and I get my depth of field and I turn on my blur as you can see it's going straight and it's going to be blurry so you can just depending on what you need you can turn this turn this turn this effect or on off but uh, the, uh, if I go through my optimization you will see the difference of uh, blur when it's on and when it's off so we'll just leave it off for now this is the god race now this is the the one way you can do it but this one works only if you look at the light it's not giving you any god rays shining down on the boat from the light so there is another way how you can do that and I'm going to show you what you can do and as, as I mentioned before I'm gonna give you a link to the videos that I took this from so what you can do is you can I'm going to just enable this uh, make it visible so there is my cone god ray this is the artificially made so it's basically a cone if I'm going to my 3d models so you can see it's just a basically cone made in 3ds max which uh, was imported here and used for the god ray material applied to it so now what, what, why I didn't choose to use this because it looks like the god ray is going down I could make it uh, uh, to be let's say I can scale it or whatever I want to do with it so if I click on this and I go to my scaling you can see you can you can change the parameters of this you can make it thicker smaller you can make it more or less visible if I go to material that is applied on it so uh, if I go to my non instance material and I'm going to open my Godray material so you know what is happening in here this I took from tutorial and just adjusted the UNV tiling so I have a uh, two normal textures again I'm going to just leave it like this you can stop video and copy this material if you want so what is happening in here is basically I have these two cloud textures that are panned and uh, faded with the camera distance and uh, faded with the fernal as well and uh, faded with the intersecting when they intersect uh, a, a boat or a, uh, a, a floor and it's not working with translucent material again that's why I didn't uh, use this but if I let's say I want to adjust it a little bit so I close this one and I open the instance of this material that I have right here and I can start playing with the values so uh, as you can see you can make this really really looking like a volumetric light which is really and if I move the camera it's getting stronger because it's affected by a camera distance so this is the values that I use for it um, you can just play with them make them looking like you like uh, how you wanted to but for underwater I couldn't use this one because as you can see you can see the top of this and if you go further you will see it as as long as it goes if I make it bigger oh, I just click on it again so if I start stretching it up you can see it's going gonna go up and you can just see it going up to the sky so if you have a for example a window or something and it's coming through the window it's okay but for underwater I couldn't use this effect so I could only use the one when you look into the Sun and you see this god ray coming through now let's turn this off and that would be all for this part and the next part I'm going to talk about the fog, how you can adjust fog, caustics and the particles. Thank you.